The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words in you abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to begin today by sharing a, a story as told from uh, Mark Anderson, who is a teacher here in Rockford at Guilford High School. He begins his story talking about how he was off to an evening meeting after work. I don't know how much you enjoy going to evening meetings after work but he was not too much looking forward to it himself. And yet at the end of it, his, uh, his disdain for having to do this uh, and spend his evening this way had turned into excitement. He says, I still remember it like it was yesterday. After the meeting was over, I got in my car and I called Guilford's academy coach and said, you won't believe me, but this was the best meeting ever and I have volunteered us to build a house for Habitat." Never mind the fact, he says, that we did not have a construction program at Guilford or a space to make walls. We were going to do this. And they spent that first year actually uh, constructing parts of the house and in some ways inside the, the gym there at Guilford. And then he says, uh, Carrie Nelson, who spoke earlier, and him decided the next year we were going to build a house on site. A dream come true for me. Then Carrie dropped the bomb on me, he says. Would you mind doing a two-story? <laughs> my response was, no problem. What did I just agree to? I have never built any house from top up, and now I'm agreeing to a two-story. I was told by a few people it's just like building a ranch on top of a ranch. I now know that they were not telling me the truth. <laughs> And as he shares the story of all the hard work that these high school students put into building this two-story house on Holiday Road uh, down on the south side of uh, Rockford here, he says that the best quote of the year came from one student who said, this has been my biggest accomplishment in my whole life. One day, he says, a neighbor brought us cookies and hot chocolate and told the, the students that she was amazed at what they have made for the neighborhood. After she was gone, the group of guys said that they had felt like they were in a movie because never in their lives had a strange adult told them thank you for anything. He says uh, Habitat and the school district and the family that was going to end up buying the house, who worked alongside them, have done more for this small group of students than he could ever have imagined. On top of building a home alongside a family, the students themselves were given a sense of pride that many of them had never felt and this opportunity led for many of them who were seniors to, to have jobs in the industry immediately after graduation. Now, I tell this story this morning not simply because we're kicking off our, our Faith Build initiative at St. Mark, but because of the way it, it shows and reveals to us how the Holy Spirit works in unexpected ways and leads us 
on unexpected paths in our lives. See, the Holy Spirit works through the least likely of people and does surprising things in ways we couldn't have imagined. This is most apparent in the first reading we heard today from the book of Acts, where two unexpected people meet and the gospel, the good news of Jesus, flourishes. This, uh, This Philip and this Ethiopian eunuch are in the wilderness, and this is not a meeting that is coincidental. This is a meeting arranged by the Holy Spirit. Now, Philip was not someone you would expect to be doing something like this. He was designated to stay put in Jerusalem, to oversee the distribution of food among the early church community. This was a role that earlier in the book of Acts, he and six others had been given so that the 12 disciples, Jesus' original followers, could focus on Jesus' command to spread the good news of Jesus to Jerusalem and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And yet now Peter, the, or Philip, sorry, Philip, basically the, the table server, is the one who just a few verses before today's reading is preaching, leave, leave Jerusalem to preach in Samaria. And now he's sharing the gospel with one from Ethiopia who will carry the good news to the ends of the earth. And this Ethiopian eunuch is unlike anyone in the Bible. This one is a foreigner, but based on the journey they're on and and what they're reading, it's clear that this eunuch is one who believes in the God of Israel, a religion which in those days would not have allowed someone like him to fully participate in the religious community. You see, the law was strict against eunuchs whose physical attributes didn't fit within a set structure of gender norms and ideas. They weren't welcome to worship freely because they were different. It's not unlike many pockets of the church still today. And yet when this non-binary social pariah asks to be baptized, to enter fully into God's love and Christian community, Philip does so without a moment's hesitation puddle or or creek or whatever small amount of water that they found in the wilderness road was wide enough for anyone to enter into the into God's grace and through Jesus Christ into full Christian community this is a story here about someone who stepped outside of their comfort zone outside of their designated role within the church to welcome someone else whom many would have said shouldn't have even been allowed to join the Christian community. This is a story about the Holy Spirit going out of the way to remind us that nothing can stop the spread of God's grace. The rules that we make, the institutions that we build, the insecurities that we allow to grow within us cannot get in the way of the God who desires for all people to have a share in God's holy and unbounded kingdom. Anyone can share the good news of Jesus Christ and anyone can receive it. This is good news both for those who've been made to feel unwelcome in the church and also for those who feel as if they may have overcommitted to this community. The survival of the gospel does not depend on you or any one person. The future of the church does not rest on your shoulders alone. No matter how many mistakes you might make or others might make, God's love will persevere because the good news of Jesus Christ and God's love cannot be hindered. And yet, you have the opportunity as members of God's family to spend your life as a witness to this good news. You can be a part of what the Holy Spirit is doing to welcome all people into those wide and welcoming waters of baptism. You don't have to do everything, but you can share God's love in so many small yet meaningful ways. 
And yes, there are people who may try to slow it down, but the gospel will remain undeterred. As the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. so elegantly put it, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Ask anyone who has lived through moments for civil rights, like Rosa Parks, who sat in the wrong place at the right time. Ask anyone who has driven even a single nail for the sake of a whole house. In this story from Acts, Philip simply talks to a traveler and pours some water on his head. That's all he does, but this simple act of hospitality for this eunuch sent the story of Jesus Christ across so many divides. When God's love is at the center, that which people considered impossible soon becomes inevitable. Just look at Guilford High School, who's now building their third house for Habitat for Humanity. The whole arc of the gospel is rooted in God's inevitable reign. And though it seemed impossible at the time, nothing could hinder Jesus from rising from the grave. And now nothing can stop the good news of God from covering the whole world with hope. Jesus Christ, in his death and resurrection, has declared that nothing, nothing can separate you from God's love. And now the Holy Spirit is transforming the world through that same love. So listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you today. Open your hearts and all your senses to the one who welcomes us in the water and feeds our faith at the table, who sustains us all our lives on this journey of faith. And as you leave this place later on this morning, may the Holy Spirit send you to be a part of God's never-ending movement of welcoming hope for all of creation. Amen.